Welcome back. For many locals, traveling in South Africa isn't affordable. The Tourism Minister, Mamaloko Kubai Ngobane, says she's asked a policy review panel to consider looking at different pricing structures for local and international travelers. Let's discuss this with what this will mean for the tourism industry and locals with CEO of the Tourism Business Council of South Africa, Chifiwa Chivengwa. Thank you very much uh, for your participation as always. So we know that a number of uh, establishments have already introduced a two-tier pricing structure. What do you think? Does it work? Will it boost tourism numbers? Well, I think, uh, you know, one of the, you know, my main characteristic of pricing is that, uh, you know, you always have input costs to take into consideration. So the talk of, you know, two-tier pricing, uh, we've always looked at it as a, as a you know, a market force where, you know, supply and demand will determine, you know, how much people will pay. If you look at what's going on right now, majority of the establishments have slashed their prices by 50% because there is no international travel you know, coming into the country. And again, there are others or those uh, establishments that have always had some sort of a two-tier pricing, and one of those is South African National Parks, whereby you know, if you're local, you know, you're treated different to someone who's coming from overseas. The same applies if you're coming from the SADC region. So does it work? Uh, you know, we still have to test the system. Uh, we need to keep in mind that uh, the international tourists may feel that, uh, you know, they are being charged more for the same service that a local is getting. So we have to be careful when it comes to that. And, and also we need to consider that the input cost and the level of infrastructure that we've built uh, for tourism in South Africa varies. So, you know, you're going to have a bed and breakfast. You're going to have you know, one-star property, you're going to have a six-star property or five-star property, you're going to have a deluxe property. So it's important that, you know, we, we, we keep all those factors in mind that, uh, you know, services differ and uh, prices differ. Right. So what powers does this review panel have, if any, to regulate pricing before we delve into the structures a little bit more deeply? Well, you know, from, from the policy point of view, it's a, it's a, it's a matter that, uh, you know, from uh, what I heard from the minister is that uh, uh, they need to look at it to look at the feasibility of whether this is a possibility. Again, we also need to look at other uh, laws, uh, you know, in the country or regulations within the country in terms of whether we can have, you know, such a pricing structure and whether it's going to be lawful and also, you know, the Competition Commission will still have to look at that. So it's something that, you know, the policy review may look at it and say it is doable or they may say that, you know, let's leave it alone. Uh, South Africa is, a, uh, you know, we operate on a, a market economy uh, where supply and demand determines, you know, how much goods and services will cost. So they may leave it as that or they may recommend that, you know, it be changed, whereby we're going to have to look at how it can be changed and whether it's going to be feasible. So you mentioned earlier that prices have already been reduced up to 50% in comparison to what they were prior to the pandemic. Is there still room for further reductions without cutting into institutions or establishments' profitability? Look, if, if you look at the price structure now that we have, the 50%, and others are even going to 80% discount, you've got to look at it from, from how the price is constructed. So the fact that we have electricity price going up by, you know, 15 percent, your rates and taxes are, are going up, uh, water is going up, and many other things are going up, uh, it simply means that, uh, you know, majority of these establishments at the current moment, they are not making any money. They are just greasing the wheels of the value chain so that they cannot just leave the hotels or any establishments, you know, closed. Uh, it's not profitable, uh, and it's not something that, uh, you know, it, it's sustainable going forward. Uh, but, you know, the conditions that we're in at the moment, you know, uh, and, and, and how, you know, the, the properties are trading warrant this price that uh, it's out there in the market. In essence, we're doing this to make sure that people are still going to work and we, we're doing this to make sure that, you know, our properties remain open, but there's no profit attached to it. And some of these establishments are running at a loss. But at least, you know, the wheels of the value chain are starting to move. And as those wheels move, uh, staff are retained, which is obviously one of the key uh, elements in, in the whole value chain. Uh, let's talk about some other ways establishments can possibly entice local visitors to see the country and spend their money. Uh, because people have been uh, kept in, in relatively tight conditions for, for long periods of time, there is an appetite to see the country and to travel. Uh, what can we look at in terms of possibly um, adjusting how establishments approach cancellation uh, policies. Is, is that an area where there's movement and where, you know, customers would feel uh, more likely to make bookings? Uh, 
Uh, look, you know, one of the things that's quite important uh, is the point that you said uh, of cancellation, and that applies for both domestic and international. You know, when you look at what's going on now, you know, if tomorrow we get a new restriction and people want to cancel or postpone their trips, as a sector, it's something that we've been practicing to be more flexible and to allow people to postpone, to change, and to make sure that, you know, they can, uh, they can come at a later stage. Now, on the issue, you know, that you raise in terms of what is it that the establishments can do, you know, to make sure that more tourists, you know, uh, you know, local tourists travel and experience these establishments. I do believe that, uh, you know, uh, making sure that... Uh, uh, the services that are being offered are bundled. So as an example, if you're going to, uh, to a particular hotel, you know, you can be offered, uh, you know, when you're at this destination, you can do bungee jumping. You can, you know, go and do other activities that are included within the price so that we broaden the experience of domestic travelers so that when you arrive there, you know that, you know, your schedule is full and there are various things that you're going to be doing, including wine tasting or you go for beer tasting and many other things that you could do within the area. And making sure that, you know, tourism, you know, flows into the community around the area. So those are the things that uh, we need to improve on to make sure that, you know, when we bundle, you know, our, our services, we ensure that uh, we include many things that are critical for people to see in the area and they can enjoy and they can go back home with different experiences. So improving on the service delivery, adding more things, you know, will encourage more tourists to travel, you know, across the, the country. South Africans tend to think very creatively, uh, but we are also uh, very, I think, in some instances, selfish. We, we tend to think that, you know, if, if, when we're attracting people's business, we need to make sure we get that business for ourselves. Do you think that's holding establishments back from bundling, like you speak, collaborating with uh, fellow uh, destinations in the area to create packaged uh, destination op options? Look, you know, if, if, if one does only one thing, you know, it limits, you know, the business into that one particular thing. It, it will mean that, uh, you know, people will look at it and say, well, if I go to this establishment, I can only go there and that's it. You know, but if I go to establishment B, you know, these things are bundled in a way that I know I'm going to enjoy various things that are tourism related. If I go to that establishment, they will choose the other establishment. So what we ought to do, and it's something that we have to work harder on, you know, as a tourism industry, we've got to make sure that we incorporate the, the, the communities around the tourism establishment, you know, when we offer these services. Let's make sure that if this is an establishment that's sitting in a rural area, let's organize with the rural, you know, area, uh, uh, you know, people are in charge. Let's make sure that there are cultural things or traditional things that people can attend. Uh, the same applies, you know, as I've said, if you're in a place where there are wineries, there are farms, let's incorporate the visit to those farms and wineries. It has to be done in a package way. And also another thing that's quite critical, because now we are traveling more and more and exploring our own country, we want to make sure that people do this over and over again and they explore different parts of the country. So bundling, you know, uh, uh, the offering with many different things makes people realize that, you know what, I can go to this place annually. Uh, because I know I'm going to do these five things that I can take my family with or my friends with. So it is a better way of doing things, and it's, it's, it's a place where we need to improve as a tourism industry. Very quickly, before I let you go, you mentioned earlier that uh, the panel that's looking into uh, two-tiered pricing structures for locals and international tourists have a lot of considerations they need to make. When are we looking at expecting a decision from that panel? Look, it's, uh, I think it's going to be a long process. Uh, my understanding is that, you know, they're doing a, a wider policy review that will guide us within the tourism sector. And that will, you know, give us some sort of a direction for the next uh, probably, you know, 20 years. So it's going to take a bit of time. I don't have the timelines. Uh, the process is managed by the minister herself and the team at the Department of Tourism. So they will let us know. I understand that they will draft a document. It will be out for, for, for comments. And then we may be able to, to know the timeline in terms of uh, when this is, this is going to be completed.